I love building apps on top of serverless functions, but they aren't perfect. The biggest problem that serverless functions run into is the fact that they can't really handle long running processes all that well, but I found a solution for this. It might not work for everyone, but it does handle a lot of different use cases for running serverless functions with long running compute tasks. So in this video, I'm going to show you just exactly how I fix the serverless functions and biggest problems. And in case that you're new here, my name is your average tech bro, and I am a serial app builder. I've built like over 14 different apps in the past five years, and I love building in public, sharing what I've learned while building and all the highs that come with it and all the many, many, whoo, many loads that come with building apps as well. So if you're interested in that type of content, then make sure to hit that subscribe button, check it out. I think you'll like the content if you're into that build in public type shit, that entrepreneurial type shit, you know? Now let us get into the main part of this video right after this quick ad read from the sponsor of today's video. Please, your boy needs to eat. Let me put food on the table. Just help your boy out. We all gotta eat right now. Watch the ad here and there, you know, click on the little ad link here and there. Check out the product. Maybe you'll like it. I try to take only cool ad slots, okay? So check it out. Let me know what you think and then we'll get back into the real meat and potato, the main part, the main dish of the video. Okay, let's go. AI has completely changed the way we code and now the real bottleneck isn't which model to use, but rather it's how fast you can get detailed prompts and context in, but that's where the sponsor of today's video, Whisperflow, comes in. It's smart voice to text that works in any app, but it's built for developers to help make prompting effortless. My coding workflow, like many of yours, involves a ton of back and forth with AI. That means writing long prompts, referencing a lot of files, and making sure the AI has all of the knowledge that it needs. But if I speak the full context into flow, it captures everything. Requirements, edge cases, variable names, and it even formats it clearly. Like look at this demo right here. Update the invite-member-panel.tsx file to no longer be a Next.js client component and instead be a Next.js server component. This means that we have to change the data fetching to no longer use SWR and instead call server actions. Normal dictation tools would choke on file name and syntax, but Flow doesn't. It automatically tags files in my IDE, recognizes variables and formats them properly, and it even handles developer-specific terminology right out of the box, like weird tools, names like Superbase, Next.js, Vercel, Cloudflare, you name it. And if I want to speed things up even more, you can use snippets. Little voice shortcuts I've set up for things like my GitHub link, code changes, and or even common replies. Just say it once and Flow drops in the full formatted version. What makes it even more powerful is the fact that it's context-aware across different apps. When I'm coding Coding, it formats my speech for dev speak. When I'm in Gmail, it formats my text like it's an email and this flexibility makes it powerful even beyond coding. On the surface, Flow looks like a really simple app, but in practice, it actually fundamentally changes the way that I use my laptop. I literally use it all the time. I can speak way faster than I can type and Flow makes sure that every single word comes out clean and perfectly formatted. If you wanna try it out, check out the link below and use YATV for a discount. And I honestly can't even imagine going back to fully typing on my computer anymore. All right, let's first start off just going a little bit deeper into the big problem that we're facing with serverless functions. So as a chronic and serial app developer that probably has commitment issues of building way too many apps, I love building apps primarily with Next.js. I'm a big full stack web app developer. So a lot of the apps that I'm building are on Vercel using Next.js. And Vercel is great because they have serverless functions. And the beauty of serverless functions is the fact that you don't have to run and manage a server because it is serverless. These hosting platforms handle it all for you. And all you need to do is hit some API endpoint. And through some wonderful technical abstractions are provided by the hosting provider, Provider, they handle all of the scaling up and scaling down of whatever serverless needs you have with serverless functions. So for me as a solo app developer, serverless functions are great, enable you to quickly just run through and build apps like crazy without having to worry about the infrastructure of the scaling. But the biggest issue with serverless functions is the fact that they often have a limit as to how long that they can run for. So if you go over here to Vercel's hosting provider limits, I believe it'll show here, right here, ah, maximum duration for the hobby programs, for hobby apps if you're on the hobby tier then it can only run for 300 seconds which is five minutes right 300 divided by 65 yep five minutes Oof, no public math but we survived that one okay we survived the test and then for pro tiers you can also only do five minutes and then a configurable up to 800 seconds i'm not going to do that calculation and this problem persists with all traditional serverless functions as well it's not just for sale any other cloud provider also has certain limits for their serverless functions some of them might be longer i believe google cloud if you go to google cloud runs a serverless product i think the maximum run time is one hour so much more than just the 300 second maximum here but still there is a limit so then to solve this Vercel came out with a new solution called fluid compute and essentially fluid compute is kind of like a serverless function that's also kind of server hosted I'm not gonna get into the technical details of it because I'm just gonna completely butcher it you can read more about it here on like Vercel's fluid compute page but essentially it allows for even longer runtime and this fluid compute product that Vercel gave us is what leads us to have this 800 second maximum runtime whereas previously the max 
maximum was only 300 seconds. But you still run into some issues because there is still technically a time limit of how long of a job can be ran on this one serverless function instance. So now let's go over into the solution that I found to help you run even longer processes beyond 800 seconds. Now first I want to do a little quick intro to the product which is called Upstash Workflows. And just to clarify, this video is not sponsored by Upstash at all. This is just a really useful tool that I found and I've kept up with over the years. So essentially Upstash is a serverless data platform and they have a lot of serverless data offerings. But the one that in particular I want to highlight is Qstash. It's serverless messaging and scheduling via HTTP. Essentially, this is a serverless pub sub queue, a pub sub pattern. You can read more about it here on what this messaging pattern is. But from a high level perspective, essentially what ends up happening is you have certain topics that you can publish messages to and then other providers can subscribe to the data and the messages that are published into that one particular topic. And then from all the providers that subscribe to that one particular topic as the data comes in, you can perform various logic afterwards. And some example use cases that Upstash provides for their serverless QStash platform is scheduling, like you can run cron jobs. Essentially, you create a topic where you can send off a certain piece of data, some certain message at a particular time, and then you listen to that topic. And once it receives that message at whatever particular time you scheduled it for, it'll then execute some type of code logic you define afterwards. And the first solution for this type of problem is the fact that you can do callbacks within QStash. So essentially what QStash callbacks allow you to do is let's say you have a really long running API request. A really common example of this is an LLM because sometimes LLMs can generate for many, many minutes, especially if the output of the LLM is very compute heavy, right? Like an example of this would be thinking of OpenAI's deep research or Gemini deep research products. These deep research products take like many, many, many minutes to run because they're very compute intensive. And so in this hypothetical scenario, what these callbacks allow you to do is that you can hit these API endpoints and then you just designate a callback URL as to where to send that completed data to. So if you have this long running LLM call, rather than having it all hosted on one serverless function and you have to wait on the entire serverless function for the LLM call to finish, where you could potentially run into the risk of that LLM call running beyond that serverless function's maximum duration, now you can just hit that LLM API endpoint and the serverless function winds down immediately. This, that, that one particular serverless function is completely done. And then Upstash will continue to let that API call process in their own uh, compute instance. And then once that API call finishes, and it then sends that response to Upstash and then Upstash then sends it into this designated callback URL that you have. It's essentially like a webhook kind of. So this is one way that you can use Upstash to improve your serverless function runtime limits, but there's an even better one for even more complex workflows, which is properly handled in their workflow product. Essentially what Upstash's workflow product does and what I think it particularly excels at is the ability to run multi-step processes on your serverless functions, but let it run for significantly longer periods of time. Let me show you a quick example in my code base that I use it for. All right, so we're looking at this little code example. And just for some context, this is essentially a tool for hiring platforms that help screen and analyze candidates interview performances. This is a process that could take multiple minutes, especially if the interview is really long and there's a lot of information that needs to be processed. And the way that the Upstash workflow works is that you define these individual steps, right? So my first step is fetching the candidate interviews. Step two is processing each interview. Step three is generating the aggregated analysis of all of that candidate's interviews. And the way that Upstash works is that you just create one API endpoint and then you wrap everything in this serve function, which is an Upstash workflow helper function. And just by defining this, and then you just define the individual steps, the Upstash workflow knows like, okay, we're gonna go to this endpoint. We have some type of unique identifier to identify this request. What step are we on? And then it'll know, okay, right now we're on step one, fetch candidate interviews. We haven't done this yet. Let's execute this. Then we get the return data and then later on once this process finished it knows okay what step are we on again now at the same process okay we know that we finished this fetch candidate interviews step in the workflow let's go to the next workflow it handles this long running function and then once this finishes it then knows to then go on to the next step which is the generate aggregated analysis step so this is a multi-step workflow that can run for a very long period of time and upstash workflow automatically handles all of the logic of knowing which step of the workflow that we're on what data to pass in here and there and it handles it all for you. So it, rather than running each of these steps of fetching the candidate interviews, processing the interviews and generating the aggregate and analysis, rather than traditionally handling this all in one serverless function call, Upstash workflows handles each of these individual calls pretty much in its own serverless function instance. And once that instance completes, it completes, goes on to the next step. So each individual step of this process is broken down into its own individual serverless function call. So then your maximum technical runtime goes beyond 
gone from just like the 800 second max that Vercel had to 800 seconds times three, 2400. Oof, damn, public math is hard. 2400 maximum runtime. Now, don't quote me on this. Definitely look around the Upstats documentation for this, but essentially, I'm pretty sure workflows are built on top of QStash. So it's really just a higher level abstraction built on top of QStash to make longer running performance serverless function uh, workflows that are not bound to the limits of just whatever serverless function provider that you have. So this is a great solution, don't get me wrong, but it's not perfect either because really I think where Upstash workflow really shines is when you have a multi-step process that can be broken down into individual steps where each individual step will never go beyond that serverless function provider's maximum runtime. But I don't think that Upstash workflows will solve the problem where let's say one single running process that can't be broken down into individual steps, if that single process is running beyond the maximum runtime limit, then there's nothing you can do about it there. Because truly, if it can't be broken up beyond like the 800 second limit on Vercel, just using it as an example, Upstash workflow can't really do much about that. But I also believe that most of these long running workflows, or I think it's going to be very rare for there to be an instance where it truly cannot be broken up into individual sub components. I think you can kind of always break something up into smaller sub components. And then in that way, you can work around the runtime limits of these serverless function providers. And I also think there's a lot of other benefits you get from using Upstash workflow, where it also has like automatic retry handling in case one of the steps fails, yada, yada, yada. It's pretty great, pretty customizable. It's a really great dev product. I've been using Upstash for various use cases for many years, and I'm a big fan. And once again, this is not a sponsored video. They just make a really good product. That's all it is at the end of the day. So that is how I fixed serverless functions. Biggest problem. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll try my best to answer them however I can. But yeah, check it out. There's a great way to still build on top of serverless infrastructure, which I do love, but it also fixes some of the big limitations that serverless infrastructure typically has.